So let us talk about pattern recognition today. Pattern recognition is uh, uh, the process by which patterns in data are found, uh, recognized and discovered. So it usually aims to classify data that is patterns which is based on either a priori knowledge or on some statistical information which is extracted from the patterns itself. So the patterns to be classified, these are observation and these are defining points in a multidimensional space. So this classification is usually based on a certain set of patterns that have already been classified, maybe uh, an individual and this set of patterns is termed as the training set. This is the training set and this learning strategy is also known as supervised while the other aspect or the other uh, the process is unsupervised means learning this can also be unsupervised in this case there is no training set what happens instead uh, it establishes the classes itself which is based on the internal statistical regularities of the pattern in the data there are various approaches uh, as i just suggested statistical um, pattern recognition that is we assume that the patterns are uh, generated by a probabilistic system and the data is reduced to vectors of numbers and statistical technique are uh, then used for the classification or pattern recognition then uh, we have this structural pattern recognition in this the process is based on structural interrelationship of the features and the data is actually converted uh, to a discrete structure such as a grammar or a graph uh, and classification techniques such as parsing and graph matching are used. The other method is a neural network. So this also simulates the behavior of biological neural networks. Let's start with the unsupervised pattern recognition. The system uh, must learn the classifier from unlabeled data. Unsupervised money, there is no uh, person who is involved, no individual. So it the uh, the system has to be automatic, or by itself it has to recognize the pattern. So it's related to the problem of uh, trying to estimate the underlying probability density function of the data. So underlying probability density function, uh, this is uh, computed. And on behalf of this only, the classes are being uh, formed and the data elements are assigned particular classes. So there are various approaches to this unsupervised learning, which includes uh, clustering, that is k-means, mixture model, hierarchical clustering, and the techniques for the dimensionality reduction. Dimensionality reduction, as we have already seen this PCA and the independent component analysis, non-negative matrix factorization, and single value decomposition. These are all the uh, uh, approaches which we may use for unsupervised pattern recognition. So let us start with this K means clustering. This is uh, unsupervised. So uh, we are given a set of n dimensional vectors and we are also specified the number of classes we want. So this algorithm actually partitions the vector into various clusters like this such that it minimizes the sum over all cluster of the within cluster sum of the point to cluster centroid distances. What it means is we have a set of vectors xi and th there is a seed point means we randomly choose a set of k means mi as a center of each cluster. So first of all the clusters uh, any random cluster is being chosen and for each vector xi, we compute the distance to each mi. Means for each value, the distance from the assumed mi means mean of that class is computed. And we assign xi only to the cluster whose distance of this xi is lowest. Means if there are two classes and the points want to go in either of the classes then the distance is computed and the minimum distance means the distance uh, which is lowest the uh, value is assigned to this class. So we update the means to get a new set of cluster uh, centers means once this all, this all has been done again the mean is been computed so the mean changes 
every time the mean changes but it terminates sometime because sometimes after some iterations this mean will not change so we update the means to get a new set of cluster uh, centers and we repeat this set means these steps 3 and 4 these set or uh, steps are repeated uh, until there is no more change in the cluster centers so k mean is guaranteed to terminate but uh, you know there is a problem uh, you know we will you will not found find sometimes the global optimum you may find optimum or you know maximum global uh, local maximum you may find so sometimes you may not find the global optimum this is an example of index storage of uh, color images because uh, for 8 bit um, you know color image uh, for 8 bit for r 8 bit for g 8 bit for uh, blue that means you have around 24 uh, pixels or 2 to the power 24 possible colors so uh, is it possible to have these number of colors you can you know uh, store them with just 8 bit so most images don't require entire color space like 2 to the power 24 so we can get by with fewer so we use this k means clustering to find the reduced set of colors so this is an example of image using the full color space and this is uh, image using only 32 discrete colors so there is not, not much of a difference and um, storage uh, space is uh, maybe re-employed somewhere else and the data is also well seen so this is an example of index storage of color images uh, for each image we find a set of colors that are good approximation of the entire set of pixels in the image and put those in a color map so uh, after that uh, for each pixel we just store the indices into the color map so this is the image of indices uh, 0 to 63 and this is the color image using these 64 colors how it is done i'll show you this is an example means these are the indexed uh, storage of color image this is the matlab uh, code for this particular thing and you can use a color map this that means the image x fxy this stores indices into a lookup table so these are the number and corresponding to this number you have this rgb value so we have color map which specifies the rgb for each index so we'll only uh, use or only small these numbers of these index are needed and few few uh, bits and size for these color mapping so this is how the uh, you know working done, done with less number of storage requirement then this is the supervised statistical method this supervised statistical methods uh, you have a class or a class is a set of objects having some important properties in common right that may be some inherent uh, properties so we might have no description for it or we might have set of samples for it so a feature extractor is a program that uh, inputs the data or image and extracts the feature that can be used in classification so these values are put into a feature vector also a classifier is a program that uh, inputs the feature vector and assign it to uh, one of a set of designated class or also to the reject class so there are various uh, number of classifier which has been um, designed defined and used uh, decision tree is there nearest class mean is there and one more you know classifier very powerful classifier is svm or support vector machines so this is the feature vector representation a feature vector is a vector like this where all these x's are real number and the element these x may be object measurement for example x j may be the count of the object parts or properties uh, for example uh, this is an object region that can be defined or represented by say number of holes strokes or moment these are the properties it totally depends on the job you have taken or the data you have taken in this example let us see that we have some holes strokes and moment and these are the number of holes number of strokes strokes and these are the moments these these values are given so these are these may be the possible features for character recognition problem so what uh, this is done is the, you have you may have a discriminant function and this function fxk performs some computation on this feature vector x so these 
these function they work upon this uh, feature vector and knowledge uh, k this knowledge k from training or programming is used and final state determination of class is done so we compare and design and the final is the output classification we uh, also uh, indicated the decision tree so the problem of character recognition may be done by uh, this decision tree what is the strength of this decision tree it is easy to understand but sometimes it uh, overtraining is done so how this decision tree can be made maybe uh, number of holes you can start uh, one holes two, uh, zero hole two hole and depending upon this uh, you know other options can be taken and finally you can get the value of num or you can recognize the pattern of the characters which you want and uh, this, there is a entropy based automatic decision tree construction what is done is you have various training set x1 x2 xn and then how the node can be defined because we want that what feature should be used because what we we have uh, shown here that sometimes holes strokes and these are used so who decide which which uh, particular feature should be used means uh, should i start with stroke should i start with the moment of inertia so for that uh, we choose the feature which result in the most information gain right only those feature is taken which has the most information gain which uh, which is measured by the decrease in the entropy so less the entropy more the information gain and more the probable chances of choosing this as a starting feature so this entropy uh, let us define it first this is given if you're given a set of training vectors s and if there are c classes then entropy is defined as uh, minus pi log pi right where this pi is the proportion of category this i examples in s so if all example belong to same category then entropy is zero and if the examples are equally mixed means one by c like throwing a dice or you know flipping a coin uh, one by c examples of each class can be done uh, is there so that entropy is a maximum of one right if all belongs to um, same category entropy is zero if they are equally like likely then the entropy is 1.0 let us take uh, some flipping coin example you have the probability of this uh, 0.5 so you place it here and you can just add it and you can get a entropy of 1 this is how entropy is computed then coming to this classification using nearest class mean what happens we compute the euclidean distance between feature vector x and the mean of each class this is the euclidean distances so this is the mean of the class this is the mean of the class and this distance is computed so uh, we need to choose closest class if close enough otherwise we reject it so we have to have the low uh, error rate uh, for example, in this uh, case, uh, scaling distance uh, we may use. Uh, why we, uh, we want this standard deviations to be used? Because uh, what happens in this particular case, we use the standard deviation also. Why? Because scale uh, scale distance to the mean of this class C according to this. Uh, here you have standard deviation. You know, uh, in the denominator. So according to the measured standard deviation in each direction otherwise a point which is near which is near uh, of the top of the class 3 will be closer to the class 2 mean otherwise this will go to class 2 so we have to have a standard deviation also in this uh, uh, classification using the one nearest class mean so if ellipses are not aligned with axis this this may be problem so instead of using this standard deviation along each separate axis we use the covariance matrix c so this variance is defined by this particular um, expression and the covariance is given by the cxy where this sigma x, x sigma y sigma xy you know it very well how it is computed these are the example we can note that the off off diagonal this off diagonal these two are small if uh, variables are independent while the off diagonal, off diagonal values are large if variables are correlated that means they vary together then we introduce this probability density function 
let us because errors are also there so let us assume that errors are gaussian and this is the this is the value this is the expression of probability density and the probability density of a two dimensional error uh, vector delta x is given by this and uh, if we if we only consider this particular case this value so uh, we look at uh, where the probability is constant that is where the exponent is constant so if we take some x y take cx take uh, delta means uh, the transpose and there will be a ellipse actually it would be an ellipse so this is the equation of the ellipse for example with uh, uncorrelated errors this reduces to these values so we can choose z to be or to get desired probability for z equal to 3 the cumulative probability is around 97% this is the contour of constant probability this is just the plotting of the previous discussion then we come to Mahalanobis distance. What we do, uh, given a unknown feature vector x, which class is it closest to? So we may assume or uh, the class center centroids and their covariances. So we find the class that has the smallest distance from its center to the point in the feature space. Now the distance, as we already seen in k-means, now here the distance are weighted by the covariance. This is called the Mahalanobis distance, not just the Euclidean distance. We use the covariance also. So this is the Mahalanobis distance of feature vector x from any ith class. So this ci is the covariance matrix of the feature vectors in the ith class. So uh, to summarize this, in pattern recognition we classify uh, patterns usually in the form of vectors into classes and training of the classifier can be supervised or unsupervised. Uh, for example, k-means clustering is example of unsupervised learning. And we have various approaches to classification which include statistical, structural and neural. So hope you got a bit idea about uh, pattern recognition. Thank you so much. Take care.